Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm Sarah Satin, indie author of Young Adult Friends, Lovers Romance, Water Friends 4, as well as the author of my upcoming fake relationship romance, Out of My League. And you can find the links to both those books in the description box below. And while you're checking out those links, if you want to drop a like and maybe subscribe, that'd be awesome. You guys voted for today's video. I had my shed video, my shed tour, um, already filmed, but I took a poll and y'all wanted to see my marketing strategies and what I used for marketing first. So here you go, and I'm not mad at it. Also, let's take a quick comment on my makeup today. It's very dramatic. I know, I don't know what I was thinking. I saw the red in my color palette and I'm like, oh, I need it. So that's what we got today. Hopefully it doesn't scare you. Let's hop into all the marketing that I used for What Are Friends For. I am going to be doing the paid advertisements first and then the free advertisements last. So be sure to stick around if you're interested in the free marketing more than the paid marketing because we love free stuff. <laughs> I love free stuff. So be sure to stick around until the end. I would love to go over with you what worked for me, what didn't work for me, what I'd use again, what I wouldn't use again in terms of paid marketing. I used Facebook ads. I used AMS ads. I booked an express so book blitz. I did two bargain booksy features. I had a fussy librarian ad and I was on book sweeps. So that's six things that I used for paid marketing that I could find from my um, receipts. Like I said before, I, I used to keep my personal and business account as one account instead of separating it. I do it differently now. So Hopefully I got all these things and if I missed any, I will let you know. So what I would use again, I would definitely use Facebook ads again. In fact, I'm using them right now. Anytime you run a Facebook ad on Facebook, you have the option to run it on Instagram as well. So um, that's what I did, that's what I do. I have an ad running continuously on Facebook for $2 a day and it gets pretty nice traffic to it. That does convert to some sales and I do think it helps with exposure. Um, so far it's reached over 20,000 people. So yeah, Facebook ads are a definite win for me and I would definitely use them again. Spoiler alert, I still do. I'd also use Expresso again. So they are a book tour, um, book service company and they have all sorts of different things. They have book blitzes, they do cover reveals, they do blog tours. Um, so far I've only ever used them for a book blitz for a Waterfront Spore and a cover reveal for Out of My League and both times it was super helpful and super fun. I plan to do another book blitz with them for Out of My League in June so I'm excited to book that with them. I've gotten so much traffic um, to my sites, to my social media stuff because of those tours and cover reveals. It's actually insane how much exposure that I've gotten from that company. So I would definitely do that again. And all these links that I'm talking about and all these like places and stuff, I will leave down below. So check out that info box. It's going to have a lot of juicy information. So the last two on my would do again list is Fussy Librarian and Bargain Booksy. And this one comes with a little bit of a caveat. Did I use that word right? I don't know. Um, it comes with a little bit of a caveat. I would only use those ad services again if I was running a discount. So I made the decision to run a Fussy Librarian ad and a Bargain Booksy ad at my book's price of $3.99. It was totally acceptable to do that, but people who look at those sites kind of generally are looking for deals. And $3.99 um, compared to a $0.99 cent book, it's not much of a deal. So if I ever wanted to use those places again, I would definitely use them um, when I drop my book's price. I plan to do a quick sale in the future, so we will see how that works. I'll let you guys know. <laughs> now moving on to what I wouldn't use again in terms of paid advertising. This really, this one really hurts my soul to talk about because I really want to love it so much, but I just can't get a handle on it is AMS ads. Like, I don't know why I can't wrap my brain around how AMS ads work, but I just can't. <laughs> I can't. I used to think that AMS ads were super important for authors and indie authors. Like, this was some magic bean that would make my book sprout into the universe and be all excited and, you know, big and don't know where I was going with that analogy. But recently I've been hearing from people that AMS ads aren't working for them as well, so it's not just me, apparently, I don't know. But then I hear like success stories and AMS ads skyrocketed their books. So a part of me really wants to learn about it, but I just can't, I can't do it. I don't know why. I watched um, a video on AMS ads by the guy that does the 
publishing rock publisher rocket i can't remember his name is it david dave dave i watched his i took his um course it was really insightful really informative but i just i couldn't do it i couldn't do it i don't know why if i could pay somebody to do my ams ads for me I would be all over it. Like, set me up, make me money, and we're good to go. It's okay. One day I'll get to it, maybe. Probably. Hopefully. And the last thing that I wouldn't use again in terms of paid advertising is book sweeps. So what it was for me is I signed up for a book sweeps promo, and I was me and a bunch of other authors. I want to say like 80 other authors in my genre, um, and we agreed to give away two free copies of our book to be included in this promo list and in return we would get a bunch of newsletter subscribers and more exposure. So I did get a bunch of newsletter subscribers but the very first welcome email that I sent out about 400 of them unsubscribed immediately and every subsequent email after that I've had a ton of people unsubscribe from those emails. So for me it wasn't really a good idea because yes I did have, I do have some people who stuck around to see my content and all that stuff but it's also a lot of people that didn't stick around. And I gave away two free copies of my book um, to the winners and neither of those winners had downloaded my book. I use BookFunnel to keep track of it so I know who's downloading what and all that stuff and neither of those winners ended up downloading my book to read it. I just sent it to them and it's still sitting in their email undownloaded. I, I just wouldn't do it again. I don't think it was worth it um, for me at this moment in time. Maybe in the future I might go back and look at it but right now probably not because I'm trying to be a little bit better about what I do for paid marketing because that was one of my downfalls. I jumped into paid marketing and I'm like, oh, I spent all this money and I'm gonna make it all back. And it's like, Sarah, what are you doing? Your girl likes to spend money, that's a problem. So if you're like me and you wanna save that buck, that dollar, before we jump into my free marketing strategies, let's take a pause. I'll give you this nice little moment in time to scroll down and hit that like button. And while you're at it, if you're not subscribed, tap that subscribe button. You can join this awesome family where I give you more tips, more strategies, and more stuff about self-publishing and writing. So let's take a five second pause while you do those things. Awesome. Let's hop into the free marketing strategies. I would do all of these again because they're free. Why not? And actually, I still do them. I still do all of them. This one's going to be a little bit of a challenge for some people, but giving away books in exchange for honest reviews. So y'all know that I am currently looking for ARC reviewers for my book, Out of My League, which the link will be down below to be an ARC reviewer to sign up. The idea of giving my book away for free was kind of hard to wrap my brain around because it's like, I want to make money off this book. Why would I give it away for free? Once you hit a certain threshold of Amazon reviews, you your book gets way more exposure, it gets boosted in the algorithm, and it starts appearing on also bots for other authors and other people like that. So reviews are so important. It really does help because more often than not, people want to help you along on your journey. That's what I've experienced anyway. That is definitely one strategy that I am like a die hard supporter of. I mean, Yes, I'm giving away my book for free, but it's in exchange for an honest review, and that review will go towards my review count on Amazon, which boosts me in the algorithm, which opens the door for more potential readers, which, you know, is a good thing. We want more potential readers. We want that. So, yes, that is the one marketing strategy that I will do until the end of time. <laughs> strategy number two, author interviews. This one can be a little bit tricky because you gotta find people who are willing to do an author interview. I never turn those down. It's free exposure for nothing on your part. You're answering a few questions, you're getting to know the person that's interviewing you, you're getting to expand your audience to their audience. On Twitter, there is a hashtag every Saturday called Shameless Self Promo Saturday. This upcoming Saturday, tomorrow, I dare you to go onto Twitter, type in that hashtag, hashtag and see all of the threads that pop up. These are just threads asking you to share your book links. Like, how awesome is that? They're asking you to do some self-promotion. They're giving you the okay. They're not judging you for it. They're asking for it. They want to see your stuff. I personally love shameless self-promo Saturdays. I think they're so helpful and so beneficial in terms of getting your book out there and also kind of building that self-promotional muscle in a sense because it can be really daunting to shout your book from the rooftops if you've never done that before. I know I had I struggled with that so hard when I first started out. I didn't want to talk about my book. I didn't want to make anyone think I was bragging about it. I didn't want anyone to be annoyed by me talking about it but 
slowly over time, I have just become so like, guys, I love my books. You might too. So you just, you should just read them and get it over with. You know, I'm just, I just love talking about them now. And I feel like Shameless Off Promo Saturday has definitely helped that. Tomorrow, hop over on Twitter. And if you want to follow me, I'm at Sarah Mary Sutton. Shameless plug. Hop on over to Twitter, check out all those threads and pitch your books to potential readers because it was really beneficial for me. Okay, two more. Promo images on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen some promotional images. And what the, what I'm talking about is a picture of my book cover or a quote from my book with the title, with a small little blurb and voila. I'll insert some clips here. These images help people to know what my book's about, see my book's cover, get that implanted in their brain. And so they will remember it when the time comes to buy it. I'm a person that is a sucker for pre-orders because I love that pre book buzz. <laughs> so I always love talking about my book before the book is actually live. I need to get better at it. I haven't started out of my leagues pitching yet. Um, today I'm recording this on Thursday. It is 40 days until release day. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Feels like so long away. But I, so my, my pre book buzz is going to be coming very, very soon. So I'll be posting a ton more promotional images. So you best check those out. Doing those promotional images, like I said, just kind of familiarizes your viewer with that book, with what the book is about, the blurb. And then if you push that pre-order link or push that Goodreads TBR link, um, more often than not, that will build that list as the time goes on. Last one, and this is one that I, I didn't want to do. I was so nervous and afraid about it, but that is newsletter swaps. I'm not talking about taking Carly's newsletter and doing Carly's newsletter for her while she does your newsletter. I'm talking about promoting Carly's book on your newsletter and Carly promotes your book on her newsletter. Don't know who Carly is? Fun name though, I like the name Carly. Maybe I'll make a book character after a Carly. So yeah, so your book is on her newsletter, her book is on your newsletter. It might be kind of obvious, but what that does is it puts your book into a different audience's awareness. People who have never heard about your book but know Carly's books, um, once Carly pitches your book on her newsletter, her newsletter, as big or small as it might be, is going to know about your book and they'll potentially buy it. I've done so many newsletter swaps in the past and they have all been so successful. And I will admit that might be because I am in the young adult romance genre. So I know a lot of romance and contemporary romance authors that are willing to swap with me. And I've met a lot on Facebook through Facebook groups, which is something you could do. Um, research your genre on Facebook and see if there's any swap groups. I am in two. Otherwise, if you reach out on like Instagram or Twitter, I feel like people are always interested in promoting their book and, you know, in exchange for helping you. Do you know what I'm saying? I do want to say you only want to swap with people in your genre. You don't want to go cross genre. If you're swapping with an author who does crime novels and you're trying to pitch your um, steamy romance, you might get a few people who are going to jump over to your steamy romance, but not a lot. So you kind of don't want to waste your time on that aspect of things and you just kind of want to narrow your focus onto your genre. Because then again too, you're exposing your newsletter and your readership to a genre that they might not be interested in and they could unsubscribe because of that. So you kind of just want to stick to your niche, 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 niche. I love niche. I don't know. I'm a niche person. I'm not a niche person. So my advice is to kind of just stick to your genre and find somebody in your genre willing to swap with and that will expose your book to so many more new people. But there you guys have it. My paid and free marketing strategies that I implemented for What Are Friends For. It was so fun kind of like learning about these strategies and figuring out what worked for me and what didn't work for me, what I would do again and what I wouldn't do again. Doing those promotional images, like I said, just kind of familiarizes your viewer with that book, with what the book is about, the blurb, and then if you push that pre-order link or push that Goodreads TBR link, um, more often than not, that will build that list as the time goes on. And I'm still learning. I feel like the fun part about this um, industry is that you're always learning. You're always learning more about writing. You're always learning more about self-publishing. And it's just, 
a constant like learning session which is funny because I don't like school I guess this is different than school I don't know what I'm talking about I don't know what I'm saying I'd love to go a little bit more in depth on how I actually got reviews for what a friend's for so that video is going to be coming very soon I also want to post my beautiful shed tour because I've had that video for a little bit now and but it's always just been on like the back burner of these other videos like I've had my book launch planner that I recorded leave that link down below the info box is gonna be riddled with so many links I love it talked about the costs um, to publish what are friends for and you guys really liked that video so hopefully the shed tour is next we will see how the world works. I don't know how it's going to go. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you watched this far, pretty, pretty please leave a like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe, please. <laughs> it would mean so much to me if you did. So let me know, have you done these strategies before? And if so, what worked for you and what didn't work for you? And what are some strategies that you ride or die by? Because I'd love to know. I'd love to broaden my horizons and learn more. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I will see you on Monday with another one. Bye. I might cut that entirely. I don't know. Let's keep a going. Mm, 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 mm. I'm lost. I'm lost. Oh, there's an ant. I'm not making that mistake again. If you watched my live stream, an ant, I tried to poke an ant and it crawled onto my finger. Hands up. Hand check. That was inappropriate. I just love recording. I missed you guys. That's not going to be included. It's fine.